Hello, I'm Officer David Cosby, the Community Relations Officer for the University of North Texas Police Department. And today I'm going to talk to you about faculty emergency readiness. So just a little bit about our department so you kind of know who we are. Uh, we are set up into three different units. We have our field services unit, which is our patrol. Um, they patrol campus 24-7, 365 in marked vehicles on bicycle and by foot. They handle calls for service, arrest reports, um, traffic enforcement, report writing, preliminary investigations. Then we have our investigative services unit, which is our detectives. They work with our officers, with other departments and the district attorney's office. They collect and preserve evidence, interview victims, witnesses, and suspects, and they perform the forensic examination of crime scenes. They obtain warrants and provide further investigations. Then we have our support services, which does include our dispatch, which is also 24-7, 365, and other areas of police administrative type support. Um, it does include officer training, department accreditation, uh, community relations, and technical services. So this is our website. We've got a lot of really good information here, including public information, which has our 60-day crime log, um, and campus safety information, which has our full list of our safety classes that are free for you guys. It also has where you can report a crime um, and different ways to contact us as well. So these are some of the safety programs that we offer. They're all completely free for you. You can visit police.unt.edu forward slash safety. Um, but any of, these frees are, any of these classes are completely free. If you're interested in one, just let me know. I'll be able to set up a time to do a Zoom um, for you guys. Whatever it takes that you guys need, just let me know. Even if it's just one person, if you, your faculty and you don't know a lot of people yet and it's just a one, you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, let me know. I can do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you. Um, whatever, whatever it takes for you guys uh, to be able to help you all out. Um, the only class that's a little bit different is our self-defense class because we have to set those up um, in a, we have to find a location, have instructors, and it is a hands-on course. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out this fall. Um, if there's a class that you're interested in or, or a specific topic that you're looking for that you don't see here, reach out to me, give me a little bit of time, and I will uh, get a class together for you and be able to present that for you. So first we're going to talk about how to be a good witness. So biggest thing is to give us some specifics. Location, location, location is the biggest thing. Um, if you think about your house, say that you give the police the address of 1700 Wilshire. When they show up there, they're going to be able to see pretty clearly the front and the rear of the, of the house. They're going to know where the front is, where the rear is. If you talk about here anywhere on campus, we have, we have a large campus with large buildings. And within those buildings, there's a lot of rooms, a lot of different areas, a lot of different layouts. So if you need help at, say, the union, don't tell us you're at the front of the union. Tell us that you're at the union by the bus stop. You're at the union by the Scrappy statue off of Holland. If you're in a park lot, tell us what specific park lot you're in. You got to think, people are cre creatures of habit. So when you come here and you park, you're probably going to park in the same park lot time after time. At the, when you enter in that parking lot, there's going to be a sign that will tell you that parking lot number along with whatever different uh, directions are for that particular lot. It'll have the parking lot number on there. And believe it or not, we know where all those parking lot numbers are, are all those parking lots are. So if you tell us that you're in lot 27, I know where that's set. So just know what parking lot that you normally parked in. So if you need help there, can you tell us? We'll know which parking lot we're headed to. Um, if you're inside the union, let us know that you're at the union, say by the information desk. You're at the union by the post office. You're the union by the Chick fil -A. Whatever it is, just let us give us as much information as possible so we can get you help as quick as possible. Also, the type of incident is it a medical, medical incident? Uh, is it assault? Is it a theft? What's going on? Um, that'll help us better prepare and make sure that we have enough units in route to handle it. If there's a suspect, make sure that you get their direction. Uh, if you can follow them from a safe distance, keep an eye on them, do so, but again, don't put, your, or, but don't put yourself in any kind of danger. And then take a picture of them with your cell phone if possible. When you're talking about describing the person, use a top-down approach. Generally, we say race and gender, and they give us clothing and any unique attributes. So for me, white male, pretty short brown hair, beard, all blue, right? I don't need anything super specific about the person. Um, I don't need necessarily if it has a writing on the, on the shirt, unless it has like really large, like say it has a big, say a white Texas on the front of it or something like that, or it says, um, you know, a particular brand or something, but in really large letters, something that really stands out and really grabs your attention and that's good information. But if it just has like a little UNT uh, Eagle or something like that over the chest, I'm probably not going to notice that. Um, vehicle description, color, make, model, 
the year, license plate, body style, two door, four door convertible, anything distinguishing about it. License plate's great because we know who the registered uh, owner is and we're able to go and make contact with them at a later date if we need to, or even right then if we need to. Um, but you know, if I'm looking for a car right then it's involved in something, I would rather know that it's a, you know, a black car missing the rear bumper. That's going to give me a lot of information while I'm out right then, because at any time when it's in the crime has just occurred, we're trying to narrow down, to, you know, 40,000 people into uh, whatever specific person we're looking for. So anything that really stands out. So when people, you know, we can go back to if they've got, say, um, a, noticeable, a noticeable limp or if they've got uh, tattoos on their face or arm or, or scars or anything, anything that just, again, makes them stand out or the vehicle that it's, you know, missing the rear bumper or that it's got a really big sticker on the back glass or anything that makes it really stand out and that'll help us be able to um, find it in the crowd. Safety while working on campus. So keep your business and personal valuables secured and out of sight. Uh, if you can, lock them in cabinets, but if you're in a place that does not have a cabinet or drawers that can lock or if whatever you have is too large to fit in there, put it up under your desk, hide it out of the way, uh, keep it out of the public eye and out of the public focus. If you're working late, let someone know and work with a coworker if possible. So if you guys say you've got a, a project coming up and it's due, say Friday, and you're running kind of out of time, maybe talk to some coworkers and see if anybody else needs to work late sometime that week and see if you guys can kind of make that happen where you're both there together. It makes a little bit more safety. Um, let somebody know that you're staying late. Uh, if you end up having to stay a little bit later, say, you know, it's going to take you an extra 30 minutes to an hour, give them a call, send them a text. Um, let them know that you're going to be running a little bit extra late uh, on top of what you'd already thought. And whenever you go to leave, even if you're leaving on time, give them a call. Say, hey, I'm, I'm about to head home or give them a text. I'm leaving right now. That way that they know that you did leave and they know that they should expect you within that, you know, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes for you at home. And if you've had any strangers, don't let them wonder. Um, if you're in an area that normally doesn't have a lot of public, uh, that's not really open to the public or uh, just make the contact with people, and you can always uh, keep it as customer service oriented, saying there's something I can help you with, there's someone I can help you find, uh, things like that. And really what it does, it lets, you, lets them know that you know that they are there. Uh, and report any start strange or alarming behavior. Um, you can also re, uh, refer an employee uh, or students to the care team um, at careteam at unt.edu or leave them a voicemail at 940-565-4373, making sure that you include the employee name, brief narrative or of behavior or explanation of distressing behavior if you did not witness it. Uh, one, good, one big thing to remember about the care team is they do not take the place of first responders. So if you see somebody that is, maybe has normally been upbeat and happy, and just, um, they've maybe have, um, maybe they're going through a, uh, difficult breakup or they've lost a loved one or something like that and you can start noticing them deteriorate and you think they need, need some help definitely refer them to the care team uh, but again they don't re they are not first responders so if it's an emergency situation you think that they're about to harm themselves or others please make sure that you contact 911. Also while at work make sure that you know your emergency evacuation plan and make sure the entire office knows it. Keep your emergency numbers near, near your phone and have employees wear IDs if possible. Again, that the way you know those people are supposed to be in that area. Be cautious of isolated places and report poor lighting facilities to poor lighting to facilities. Um, also, same with doors. If you notice the door is not latching right correctly, or if it takes a, or maybe it's it's dragging or something like that, where it's not always getting latched all the way, uh, make sure you get that reported and get that fixed during an active shooter. So we have a, it's about an hour and a half long presentation that's on our YouTube for active shooter. So I'm gonna run through this one slide for you guys. Um, if you would like our active shooter presentation, let me know, we can do that presentation for you. If you wanna go look at our YouTube, if you've got more interest in that, you can do that as well. Um, so always during an active shooter, if you could run, run, that is the best option, um, if you could do so safely. Uh, but if you may not always be able to run. So say that it was like this office and the shooter's out in the hallway, I'm not going to be able to run because if I were to run out to the hallway, then I'm going to be a victim of opportunity, right? So my best option right then is to hide. So at the hide, I'm going to lock the door if, if it's got a lock, and then I'm going to barricade. I'm going to start push, pushing desks, chairs, cabinets, um, file cabinets, whatever I've got, I'm going to start piling up there because really what I'm trying to do is to delay or deny access to my room, okay? 
So I want to make it where if the shooter starts trying to come in, they realize it's too much work and they're wasting, they're taking up too much of their time because they know they only have a limited bit of time as well. Um, if, if I have to fight and that's considered to be the last resort. So say I'm trying to barricade the door and the shooter starts coming in and I haven't had time to get the, the uh, door fully secured. Um, then I may have to, to escalate to the fight and remember this is the last resort and they're bringing the fight to us. If they're out in the hallway, I'm not going to go out in the hallway to, to do, for the fight. I'm going to hide here um, and then hopefully uh, the police the police will be able to respond. Um, but if I have to fight, you're going to have to use a weapon. Um, look around and see what you have that could be used as a weapon, whether it be a pair of scissors or um, a pen, coffee mug, laptop, whatever you have at your disposal could be used as a weapon. Um, so if you have more, uh, if you want more information about active shooter response, again, check out our YouTube, contact me, I'll do that class with you one-on-one, -on -one. Um, or and you can also call and text 911 at UNT. Emergency preparedness, UNT's Emergency Manage Management and Safety Services program coordinates safety efforts across campus. So that uh, faculty, staff, uh, safety coordinator program, international travel insurance and safety help, and severe weather planning in, in addition to other things. Um, so one, a couple of great ways to connect with them is at the Mean Green Ready, um, at Mean Green Ready on Facebook and Twitter, and their website at emergency.unt.edu. And then another amazing resource that they have is the Mean Green Ready app. Uh, it has weather updates, it's got evacuation routes, AED locations, emergency phone locations, important numbers. Um, really, the emergency, uh, the evacuation routes and the AED locations are pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so make sure that you download that app. It's very helpful. So with fire alarms and active uh, evacuation, never send this a false alarm. Immediately begin to evacuate the area. Uh, you want to know where the closest exit is located. So you know you want to, you don't want to use um, elevators in an emergency. So if you normally use the elevator know where the staircase is at, try to see if you can know where two or three of them are. That way, in case one area is blocked, you know where, where another one is and know where it leads out to. And then make sure that within your department, you guys have a place where you all meet up so that you know that everybody is safe. Everybody that was in the building should be at this particular area. Um, and then inform students and others that they must evacuate immediately. Take into account students who may have access or functional needs. So that may be something that you bring up at the beginning of class that you encourage your students to communicate to you what assistance they need. So you let them know, hey, if, there, if, if anybody needs any additional assistance during evacuation, let me know and have them kind of tell you beforehand. That way, if the emergency does happen, that you know who you may need to help. So some weather related emergencies. With tornado sheltering, the best location is sheltering below ground. Um, if that's not available, go to the lowest level and look for a center room um, and avoid exterior walls or windows. In a medical emergency, call 911 emergency. If you don't have a phone, assign a specific person to call 911. Just like we've all heard in training over and over again. Don't just say, hey, someone call 911. Point to a specific person, say, you call 911. Give a specific person that task so you know that they will call. Know and communicate, again, your exact location, because once again, if we're trying to get to you, we need to know exactly where you're at. Um, designate someone to meet first responders and lead them to the patient's locations. While here at UNTPD, we know our buildings inside and out. We depend on Denton Fire to help with our medical emergencies. And while they know quite a bit about the university, they don't know as much as we do. So if you can have people uh, meet them, maybe if you have multiple main entrances, uh, have them have somebody go to those entrances. So when, when the fire department comes in, uh, they're able to quickly get to the patient and they know your locations of your AEDs. So alerts and notifications. There's Eagle Alerts, which is something that you're automatically signed up for unless you um, deactivate that. Admin announcements, emails, uh, UNT website and social media, um, code red, outdoor siren, sirens, weather radio, and then make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings. So um, code red is kind of like Eagle Alert for, um, for the city. I know the city of Denton has it and other cities have it. So that may be something to look into. Um, and again, you wanna make sure that you have multiple ways that way in case um, if Eagle Alert's down or something's wrong with that, then you still have your, your weather radio. Um, with the outdoor sirens, I wanted to mention that you guys, y'all are probably new to campus, is that uh, there are several around campus. There's one right over by the G, uh, GAB. The first Wednesday at noon, as long as there's not any severe weather or any thoughts or any 
um, predictions we serve with, then they will sound the um, siren it's very, very loud. Uh, you will become where you recognize it. Um, but they do test those. So again, I'm the Officer David Causey uh, with the University of North Texas Police Department. I'm the Community Relations Officer. This is our uh, physical address. It's at 1700 Wilshire, uh, right across from Mozart uh, Hall. Um, our non-emergency is 940-565-3000, and our emergency is 911. Um, you can email me, david.causey at unt.edu, or give me a call to my office phone at 940-369-76911. Uh, if you guys need anything at all, if you just want to talk to an officer, if you're looking for one of our training programs, or if you have any questions, anything at all, please reach out to me. Um, I'd love to help you guys out. This is what I do, and I greatly enjoy it. So um, welcome to UNT. Hope you guys have a great day, and let me know if I can do anything for you.